In the Erase Lynching series, Ken Gonzalez Day alters 19th and 20th century souvenir lynching postcards, removing the victim and the rope from each image. In doing so, he directs our attention to the spectators of the lynchings and ultimately to the dynamics of whiteness that construct and perpetuate over and over again these racist violences. Of the 15 images in the series, I find myself drawn to, or really confronted by, the 1930 photograph of the lynching of Thomas Shipp and Abraham S. Smith, two black men who were dragged from a Marion, Indiana courthouse and murdered by a mob of 5,000 people before they could stand trial for an alleged crime. It's a haunting and grotesque image. Our gaze cannot be passive. It's immediately met by the gaze of a white man who stares resolutely at us as he points to the now absented, brutalized bodies of Ship and Smith. The original photograph was reproduced on postcards and circulated by the thousands. In 1939, Abel Mirapol, a Jewish poet, saw the image and wrote the poem Bitter Fruit in response. It opens. Southern trees bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves and blood at the root, black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Mirapol then put these words to music, which became Billie Holiday's infamous Strange Fruit. She debuted the song at Cafe Society, New York City's only truly integrated nightclub in 1939. Leela Taylor, author of Darkly, Black History and America's Gothic Soul, describes how even in that most progressive and radical of sites, Billie Holiday was hesitant to sing it, afraid that she'd never work again, or worse. The song carries with it the ghost of the image. As a white spectator myself, looking at this image 90 years later, I'm forced to contend with the d discomfort, disgust, and devastation of knowing that I too might be implicated in or even perpetuating racist violence. Mm -hmm.